Hello all, this is the step-by-step -step setup of IBM DB2 Pure Scale. This particular setup is done on DB2 11.5.6 Linux 8.1. I'll be using Red Hat Linux and VirtualBox 6.1.30. I'll repeat, this is done on DB2 11.5.6 Linux 8.1 Red Hat Linux and VirtualBox 6.1.30. The for this particular video or for this particular setup, I'll be using two Linux boxes. The host names for this is DB1 and DB2, and as I mentioned, these are Red Hat Linux boxes. For the instance owner, make sure I'm, I'll be using the instance owner as DBP. Make sure that same user exists on both the nodes, and also make sure that UID and GID across the host is matching. So user ID and group ID for the instance owner and the fence user matching and for the test purpose i'm using same user as the instance owner and fence user i'm not using the different user but in your production environment make sure to use a different user for the instance owner and fence user i'll be using only one public ip per node so set the networking i'll show you the not that i do not have public and private ip but you can or definitely have one public ip and one private ip the cluster can connect on a private ip and the public can connect on the public ip you can do that but in my environment i'm setting only one ip i'll show you how my etc host looks like and i'll show you my in ip configuration as well the we should be able to ping the DB1 should be able to ping to DB2 and DB2 should be able to DB1. There should not be any firewall blocking between these two machines. The passwordless SSH between the root, that is very important. Make sure that there is a passwordless SSH between the root so the DB1 can connect to DB2 and DB2 can connect to DB1 without password. I'll be, by default, the DB2 get installed in opt IBM. I'll not be using opt IBM. I'll be using DBI, DB2, V. 11.5 11.5 location and uh, what i'll do is like in the root bash rc i will set this export this path variable so that any command which is there any command which is present in the instance home, uh, instance location or the bin location i do not have to navigate it and i can just run those commands directly otherwise every time i have to do some commands i have to go cd to this location and run this command so instead of that i will be setting the path environment then we have to set up the NDP. Uh, I'll be using the crony D. I'll start it, but for some reason the DB2 will still complain the NDP failed, which is which we can ignore in our test environment, but in production environment, make sure that the NTP service is running. I'll be using DB2 11.5.6 community edition. You can use you can run, you can install the DB2 using the the DB2 setup, the GUI mode. However, I'll be doing using the DB2 install. And instead of running everything via the DB2 install, what I'll do is like I will first install the SAM separately, the TSA MP, I will be installing separately. Then I will be installing the GPFS. And finally, I will be installing the DB2 binaries. And when I install, I'll be specifying this particular location. I'll be mentioning that I'm installing server and the feature pure scale. As I mentioned, I have put a note here. You can also use the GUI mode. So GUI mode is perfectly fine. When you run the GUI mode, make sure that you select the DB2 installation with the pure scale feature. However, I'll be doing this using the command line. The make sure that the installation path for DB2 binary is same on all the hosts. So that is also important. Make sure that the installation path for the DB2 binary is same on all the hosts. Verify the DB2 installation using DB2 LS command. The share storage. The you can use SCSI protocol. I'll be using SCSI protocol. You can use any of the mechanism, the share storage mechanism. However, in my environment, I'm using the SCSI. What I have done is like I have set four disks. I will not explain how this storage disk are shared, how the storage is said. That will make this video lengthy. And I have already recorded a video on how to set up the share storage. You can always refer that or you can always refer the internet. There are plenty of articles over there. So I'll not repeat that, but these are the share storage. This is coming via SCSI storage. So first, this is the storage box. This is the storage box from where the storage is coming. And this is the this is the IP address. This is the, the data disk. This is the tiebreaker disk. These are the extra two disks which I will use in the future lab. I will not explain you now, but I'll these are provision for the future labs. Uh, which i will record so that you will come to know why this particular two disks are set up but to start with 
this is the data disk and this is the tiebreaker disk the the create the instance we can use the db2 i set up the gui mode we can use the db2 i set up the gui mode or db2 i create that is a spelling mistake here ignore my mistake so you can use the db2 i create or you can use the db2 i set up so the db2 i create command looks something like this so we are saying that we are going to add the two members db1 and db2 we are adding the two cluster facilities caching facilities db1 and db2 this is our shared device this is the data this is the data disk and this is the tiebreaker disk and this is the instance owner and past user the what, instead of running this particular command this is why it is highlighted in the red instead of running this command what i will i will not use this command what i'll do is like i will first i will create only one member so i'll create the member on db1 the first one and i'll create the catching facility cluster catching facility on node db2 uh, and when I do that, I'll specify which where is the shared disk and where is the tiebreaker disk. So I'll do that. And then what I will do at a later point in time, once this particular activity is completed, we will review the etc fs type to see that there is a shared file system. And the we will we need to make sure that we set this particular parameter to on. The reason of this is like we do not have the 10 GB network. We have I have only one GB network. So if it is on the slower network, then we need to set this. Otherwise, the instance won't come up. We can see the instance using db2 instance minus list using this particular command. We will verify our instance list and we will also verify our db2 nodes.config file. We will also verify the tiebreakers. So db2 cluster minus cm list tiebreaker. So we will verify our tiebreaker. And if it is not set, we will set the tiebreaker as well. As I mentioned that in the beginning, I will add only one CF and one member. So then what I will do is like I will add another CF and the previously I added the CF on DB2. So now I will add the CF on DB1 and I will add another member uh, to the cluster. When we add the CF, that time the member has to be stopped. When we add the uh, when we add the CF, the member has to be stopped. And when we add the member, the CF has to be stopped. So remember that particular point. Once this particular activity is completed, once we run this particular command, we, sh we should have two members and two CFs. The first one, which we did, the first one when we created the db2i create and the next one using the db2i uptt add command. Then once that is done, we are going to create the database and add the storage. So what we are going to do is we will create the database and uh, the the we will verify that database is created and we are going to access that particular database. So we are going to create the database. The create database command remains same. There is no difference to the create database command. So that remains same. There is no difference to the command which you will execute in any standalone normal instance. Before uh, creating the database, we will verify the default DB path. We will verify that it's, uh, it's set to the GPFS shared file system. And we can verify using db2 cluster minus cfs minus list file system or we can check the kit cat etc fs tab so we can verify the etc fs tab file and we you should be able to see that that is the shared file system and then well, finally we'll create the database once we create the database we are going to add new storage to the cluster and i'll now i'll not talk about this now because there are so many things that we have to do and i'll confuse you if i talk about it so when i will talk about the next sections when we reach to that particular point so i'm going to start the activity so let's go to the document beginning of the document and verify so i got two machines the db1 and db2 so these are the two machines that i've got as i mentioned i'm using the red edge 8.1 host name ctl that command will show you that i'm using red hat 8.1 the green color machine is node 1 the sky blue machine is the node 2 db2 and both machines have got red hat 8.1 there is no db2 installed you can see there is no db2 installed on this particular machine so db2 ls use no output so that the reason is the db2 is not installed this is a four core machine with 8 gb ram this is running on virtual box it's a four core machine with 8 gb of ram the next thing that i want to show you let's go to the document and the instance owner so as i mentioned the i have kept 
the instance owner user id which is the dbp in my case the instance id is 15011600 and the same is there on node 2 so exactly same so make sure that user id and gid of the instance owner matches across the nodes as i mentioned we will have only one public ip per node so if i do cat etc host you should be able to see that i have got only one public ip the db3 this is the third node there will be further exercises where i will be adding the third host or third member to the cluster so that's why this particular setup is there but for now you can safely ignore it the as i mentioned the if config we have only one ip so if i run the same commands on node 2 as well you can see exactly similar and we got exactly one ip so i do not have multiple ips i have set up only one ip this is done so that your life is easy my life is easy if i have to set up multiple ips it just becomes difficult for me uh, and this is my personal lab so one ip is fine but in your in your production environment make sure you use multiple ips so this is the this is the ip 101 for the node 1 and 102 for the node 2 1 for node 1 102 for node 2 that's done the next thing that i mentioned is we should be able to communicate the the first node should be able to talk to second node so ping db2 that's working you can see it's connected and ping to db1 that second node is able to connect to db1 so that's also done the final test that i mentioned is the passwordless ssh should be working so the ss the root the first hole should be able to connect to each it itself without passwordless ssh and it should be able to connect to the second node without passwordless SSH. so from db1 we went to db2 from db1 we were able to ssh to db1 so it did not ask for the password and from db1 we went to db2 similarly here as well the password is within the host and outside the host so from db2 we went to db1 so passwordless SSH for the root and instance owner make sure that is set now i'm going to clear it i'm going to clear it and i'm going to exit and i'm going to exit and i'm going to clear it again so now here i'm on node 2 and exit and exit and clear here i'm on node 1 see the path in the root bash rc so i mentioned that set the path so that your life becomes easier and my life becomes easier so if when we run the db2 instance commands then we don't have to always navigate to this we don't have to say cd we can directly run those commands if we don't set these variables if we don't set this path environment that every time i run the db2 setup db2 iupdt command i have to navigate to this so to to do to avoid that hassle i have set this particular environment it's not mandatory it just makes the life easy the next thing is i mentioned that ntp this particular things the crony is already installed so that's not required and i'm starting it however even after starting the the db2 will still complain about the ntp service so i'm going to ignore that error but in the production do not ignore the ntp errors it's very important that the clock is synchronized now comes the point where we are going to install the db2 so th this is where currently i have that this is my windows file system you can see i got db2 11.5.6 already uh, downloaded so this particular tar file i will unzip using the tar xf command on both the nodes and then i will okay so let's do one by one so now i'm, I'm on node one so i'm going to unzip it to this particular location i'll do the same thing on node two i'll copy both the commands together on node two i'm going to unzip those files so that's getting unzipped so that's done the next thing that we will be doing is i'll go to that location and you can see server dash at june 11 the okay so that is the timestamp of that original file so this is not this timestamp so ls minus l you can see that we got the db2 files extracted and then i'll come here as well so cd dbe slash server dash and we can see the db2 files are extracted on node 2 you can use the db2 setup you can definitely use the db2 setup to set up the pure scale instance or pure sorry pure scale installation you can do the via db2 setup however i will not be using the db2 setup what i will do is like i will manually install one by one so the prerequisite as uh, this one command checks whether the whether the tsa mp all the prerequisites are met and that says yes and here also it says yes so that's good the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to install the sam the tsa mp so it's asked for the license press the press the space button till you hit this and press y and do the same thing on node 2 
press the space button until you hit the Y and enter. And the TSA MP is now getting installed on both the nodes. Once the TSA is installed, the next part is we are going to install the GPFS. So the install GPFS minus I, that's the command that I'm going to run on both the nodes. Once the GPFS is installed, I'm going to finally install the DB2 install. I will repeat, you can do this via the DB2 install directly. You do not have to do that separately. I prefer to run it separately because then I know where exactly it failed and or you can use the DB2 setup. OK, so the choice is yours. Whatever choice you want to take in your environment, what suits you, do it that way. Not, no need to follow this particular document. All that you need to do is like you need to get your DB2 installed. So the TSA is installed. Now I'm going to install the GPFS. So that's done and that's running here as well. So the GPFS is getting installed. The next thing that once the GPFS is installed, we are going to create, as I mentioned, the DB2 by default, it will get installed in opt IBM DB2 uh, folder. Instead of that, I'm specifying this location because I can. The path is simple. I'm used to this particular path, so I'm creating that particular directory. You can see the GPFS also got installed on both the nodes, so that's done. The next part is this. So let me go to this location. This is where the DB2 install is there. So ls minus l, the DB2 install is here and ls minus l db2 install is here and i'm going to run this particular command on both the nodes together so done and it will ask for the license and i'll say yes and here as well it will ask for the license and i'm going to say yes and the command that i ran db2 install space minus b for the path p product for the server feature for the pure scale that's what it is done so this particular installation is going to take some time while this get is getting installed on both the nodes I'll pause the video and come back when the installation is completed. The DB2 is installed on both the nodes. As you can see, the execution completed successfully. The execution completed successfully on both the nodes. The DB2 is installed. So let me clear the screen. Let me clear the screen. And what I'll do is I will show you the version that I'll be using. As I mentioned that I'm using the DB2 11.5 community edition. And if I run the DB2 LS command, you should be able to see the it's the it's the 11.5.6, uh, 11.5.6, and it's installed in this particular location, and it's installed today, April 16th, Saturday, April 16th at 28:26, and the time in my watch is 12:29, so exactly a few seconds before. That's installed here, and it's installed, and it's. I have made sure that the path, the installation path, is exactly similar on both the nodes. So that's done. The next thing that I mentioned is the shared storage. So this is the the storage IP, the storage box IP from where this particular disk are coming. This is the data disk. This is the tiebreaker disk. These are the two additional disks which will be used in the future. So just ignore about this disk for for now. So I will show you how my current configuration looks like. So clear my screen. How the current configuration looks like. So I got five disk A to E. So I got five disks here and exactly five disks on here, A to E. So you can see I do not have this 15 GB, 5 GB, 20 GB or 30 GB, 15 GB. So I do not have those disks at all. So what I'll do is I, I, will, I will discover the disk on this portal. I'll do that here as well. And you can see that I got four disks, the 15 GB data disk, the 5 GB target, tiebreaker disk, the 20 GB data disk, and 30 GB. As I mentioned, ignore this disk, ignore this disk. We'll just bother about the, these two disks, but I will log into all the disks together. So let's do that. Done, and I'll do that here as well. And, done. and once that is done, I will rerun this particular command, this same command I'll rerun, and now you should be able to see that I have got 15 GB disk, 5 GB disk, 20 GB disk, 30 GB disk, and we are going to use these two disks for now. The 20 GB and 30 GB will be used in future. Similarly, if I run the same command on node two, you should be able to see those extra disks, 15 GB, 5 GB. So initially I had only five disks, and now you should be able to see that I have more than 15, 5, 20, and 30, similar to node one. That's done. The storage is exposed. Now the time comes when we are going to create the instance. And as I mentioned, 
we can use the db2 i setup you can use the db2 i setup however i will not use the db2 i setup i have already recorded a video on how to do it on db2 i setup that is already a video so i will not use the same method what i will do now is i will use the db2 i create command so that's what i'm going to do and here in this command what we are saying is like there will be two members one member on host one one member on host two two uh, cluster catching facility cfs one on db1 and one on db2 however i will not run this command what i will do is i will create one member on host one one cf on host two and then i will add the member on host two and cf on host one so i will do that so let me run this particular command and as i mentioned i have set the path everything so now i can just run the db2 i create command i don't have to go to the cd db2 i uh, the instance directory i do not have to go there and i it, it just i can run this command so that's done the db2 i create command is run, run it's going to take some time it maybe takes close to 15 to 20 minutes for this to run so what i'll do i will go to uh, the node one I will go to the because we ran that command from node one. So I'm going to node one. I'll go to the temp location. I will say ls minus l db2 i create. Give me the logs for db2 i create. And this is the log that the time in my watch is 12:33 and at 0:32 a moment minute seconds before we ran this. So I'm going to get this, and you can see the db2 setup log started at 12:32. So it has started, and the instance is now getting created here so let's wait for it like actually let me instead of doing the cat let me do the tail minus af it will wow okay so where is it so tail minus f and you can see it is moved and it should move here as well the, it says installing db2 files on remote host says it will take 600 seconds it won't take 600 seconds it will take few seconds the reason is we have already installed db2 so it will identify that db2 is already installed so it will not repeat this particular step 600 seconds translates into 10 minutes and it's not going to take 10 minutes however the you can see that it gives this particular information the data data the data file okay it has moved to the next step so it's moved to the next step and as i mentioned it won't take that much time and you can see that it, it gives all of this information in the log the what what is the data disk? What is the tiebreaker disk? What is the instance port, instance user ID, etc., etc. And it looks like everything is getting success. While the instance is getting created, what I'll do is I'll minimize the screen here, like this. I'll minimize the screen like this, so we can see the log and the the DB2 I create together. And I'll pause the video, and when the instance is created, I'll resume it. The 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 instance it's going to take some time, so. I do not want you to watch the screen while it's happening. The time in my watch is 12.34. So maybe another 20 minutes, 10 minutes, and we should be done. So 12.44, between 12.44 to 12.54, we should be able to get our instance up and running. So I'll pause the video and come back. As you can see, the there is a minor error that occurred, and that's because the NTP that we failed, by, and there are some other errors. Uh, and db2 setup log finished at 12:48 the it's let me see at what time it started so if i do head we should be able to see here so 12:48 it ended and 12:32 so it took almost 16 minutes yeah it took 16 minutes for this particular setup to complete and the db2 is the db2 install instance is now created so let me go as that dbp and let's run the db2 instance minus list command and just see what we have got here so you can see what you can see here is they both are in stop state and the reason of that the it's it's let's come here and run the lsm command and you should see that many things are offline and it's not even pending online and the reason of that is because as i mentioned i'm using the 1gb network so so what i'll do is like i'll set up this particular parameter at the instance level on both the nodes so that's done i will do the same thing on node 2 as well so 
SSH DB2. So I'm doing that on node 2 as well. So that's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the db2 start command and I'll wait for this to come online. So let's run the lsm command and you can see now they are pending online. They are coming online. We will we will verify the cat etc fs tab while the instance is coming up. We will verify the cat etc fs tab file. So we will see that now we have got a GPFS share storage. This is the DB2 SD GPFS. You can clearly see that it's a GPFS file system. This particular disk uh, should be 15 GB disk because we specified. You can see it's a 15 GB disk out of which close to 5 GB, 4.7 GB is used and 11 GB is available. And this particular disk is the 15 GB disk because you remember that we use the SCSI protocol and we mounted a 15 GB disk as a data disk. So that's why the disk is a 15 GB disk. So we have, uh, we can also, you know, what we can do is we can, we will also verify the notes.config file. So let's do that. Uh, I think this is started. So let's do DB2. Okay. I think I did it on node one. So let's run the DB2 instance minus list command and while that is running we will verify the db2 nodes.config and you can see there is one member on node 1 there is one cf on node 2 there is one member on node 1 or db1 and one cf which is primary cf on node 2 that's done and you can see the db2 nodes also reflect the same there is a one member on node 1 and one cf on node 2 so the db2 nodes config matches with db2 instance list so and this matches with the command that we ran we created one member and one cf member on db1 cf on db2 member on db1 cf on db2 so that's done the next thing that i wanted to show you is the tiebreaker let's look at our tiebreaker so the db2 cm minus list tiebreaker and as you can see the tiebreaker has failed it's not uh, it's it has not taken the disk that i specified in my command i specified the dev this particular disk as a tiebreaker disk for some reason it has not taken it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to manually set the tiebreaker using this particular command so this particular command has to be run as a root you cannot set the tiebreaker using the instance id and it's doing that and when once that is done what i'll do is like i will verify the tiebreaker and now it should be it's a device disk type. You can see that it has done. It has created a tiebreaker disk, and now we can see that it is a tiebreaker disk. So that's done. Now what we are going to do is we started with one CF and one member. So we started with one CF and one member. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now add another CF to the cluster and another member to the cluster. Currently, now currently we have got the member on node 1 so i will add the member on node 2 and cf on node 1 so i'll do cf on db1 and member on db2 so uh, the we do not have to stop the member 0 because i believe because i'm adding uh, let's think let's think let's think let's think uh, so yeah so to add a cf we have to stop the member so what we have to do yes we have to definitely stop the member because i i uh, if we are adding the cf on a host where there is already a member running we have to stop that member and then only add the cf so let me stop the cf once the cf is stopped yes it is stopped so let's do the db2 instance list command and you will be able to see that the member is stopped and now what i'm going to do the member is stopped you can see the member is stopped now i'm going to say db2 iupdt minus add cf on db1 so i'm on db1 i'm adding the cf to the instance dbp dbp however i cannot run that command as the instance owner this particular command has to be run the db2 i create db2 iupdt all of that has to be run via root so i'm going to hit the enter what I'm going to do at the same time is I'm going to clear my screen, go to CD TMP, LS minus LRT, and grab for DB2 I U star. And you can see, okay, why did I do star? And you can see that we got the DB2 IUPDT log 
my watch is 12.55 and at 0.54 we got this particular log. So let me clear it and let's see that log and you can see uh, it has not at started. Uh, it's it's still initiating but at 12.54 we have initiated the db2 iupdt command to add a new cf. So let's give it a minute and figure out that it starts adding. So let's it's it's again going to take a lot of time. It's uh, so let the first message appear saying that it is starting and then I will pause the video and come back when it's done. So give it a minute. What I can do is instead of cat again and again, I can do tail minus F and it's still in the initiation phase. So just give it a minute. Yeah. So it looks like it has started. You can see the step one is started and we got our log mode. So it's going to take some time. As I mentioned, it's going to take some time. So I'll pause the video and come back when all of these steps are completed. As you can see, the, the DB2 IUPDT, there are some warnings. However, I'm going to ignore those warnings. And you can see the setup finished here as well. So looks like now what I'm going to do is uh, do I have that screen db 2 instance list? I do not think I have that. I okay. Fine, you can always rewind the rewind the video and see that we had one instance, one member, and one CF. Now we should have two two members. So we got sorry two CFs because I added the CF. So we have got two CFs here. So we got two CFs and one member. Once that is done, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the the I'm going to add the another member. So this particular member will be added on node two because we you can see that I got the I got the members running on node one, which means I will add the another member. Now the thing is when I'm adding the member, I need to stop. So what I'll do is like I will start my CF because I need to stop the CF. So I'll start the CF on 129. So I'm going to start the CF 129. So once I start the CF 129, I'm going to stop the CF 128. And then, then I'm going to initiate the DB2 IUPDT command. So let's do that. So this is done. And then while once the db2 stop is done, I'm going to initiate this as a root. So I'm going to wait. All of these activities takes time. Maybe if you have a powerful machine with a powerful laptop. So that's done. And I'm going to hit the enter here. And just to show you that now the CF is stopped on db2 that's where i'm adding the node so you can see on db2 the cf is stopped that's where i'm adding the this one again this is going to take some time the current time is 1259 i'll not show you the log and all that stuff i will just come back once this is done keep watching at the time uh and i should be back in maybe six minutes five to six minutes this should be done so i should be back by one 105 uh, a.m. So yeah, no, yeah, that's that's right. So I should be back by 105. So let me pause the video and come back. As you can see, again we got the minor error. That's because of the NTP service and rest all looks good. So now, if F, okay, so great, I have the screen for some reason I did not clear it. So let me run. SU minus DBPP and let me maximize this and where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Yeah. So we had we had one member and two CFs before running this particular command. And now if I run db2 instance minus list, you should be able to see that we have got two members and two CFs right now on our system. What I'll do is like I'll run the db2 start command so it starts everything. And I'll also do one more thing is I will review. The, I will review the the db2 nodes config file. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, db2 pif. Why did I do that? db2 pif. Yeah. Uh, 
and you should be able to see that we got now two members in the DB2 nodes config and two CFs which matches to our configuration. And once this command is run, then everything should be started. Now that now that we have finished adding two members of so this this if we would have run this command if you would have run this command then it would have done automatically everything but i just wanted to show you how you can add another cf and another member at a later point in time how do you do that so that's why instead of doing everything in one command i prefer to do it this way so that you can see how i added a new cf to the cluster and how i added a new member to the cluster we started with one member one cf now we have two cfs two members the next part is creating the database so we have got our instance running we got our cfs running so we got everything so you can see that it's in the catch up which will become the peer peer once it's finally catch up so we got two members and two cfs and now it's time to create our database to create the, the database you we don't have to follow any specific command it's the same command that we will be running but before creating i'll verify the default db path where the database is going to get created and you should be able to see that the default db path this is the this is the file system the cfs file system as you can also see in cat etc the gpfs file system shared file system so this is this particular file system is the gpfs file system created by db2 so you can see it's a gpfs file system this particular file system should be accessible on both the nodes. So if I go here and do ls minus l, and if I do, okay, actually this is node two. So let me do one thing. God, how many times? Okay. So if I do, if I do this on node two and ls minus l, and if I do the same thing on node one, you should be able to see that it's exactly similar file system. 0106 and 0106 that is only SQL lib. So this is on node 2 and this is on node 1. It's a shared file system. The next thing that we are going to see is that we are just going to verify that it's a it's that the DB2 SD is indeed a GPFS file system and you can see it's a indeed a GPFS file system and this particular disk I have already shown it to you that it's a 15 GB disk because we used DF minus H. Okay, we have used the 15 GB 15 GB disk to set up the data disk. So that's why it is 15 GB. The next command that I mentioned is the create database. This particular command is exactly similar. We do not have to have, we do not have to do any changes to run this particular command. We can run this from command from any member. Not if the host is only CF, we cannot run it. If we can if let me repeat if the host is only having the cf but not member we cannot run this command this this command has to be run from the existing member so both the db1 and db2 has got a member so i could have run this command from either host but for some reason if you had only the cf configured on a host then you cannot run that command from that particular host remember that so the db2 create database command has started what i can do is i can follow the db2 diag minus f and you can you should be able to see that why this particular diag is also i think my system is okay so we can see test okay so the test 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 yeah you can see the db test is giving the messages so it's getting created and while it is getting created let me show you something interesting and you can see the dbp the dbp directory which was not there before that has appeared and yeah so where is it yeah so you can see the under this directory the cd db2 sd there was only one directory sql lib shared there was no dbp directory and that has appeared and if i go to that particular directory under that there will be no directory under that there should be the database directory test and under that there should be a table spaces directory as you can see this would be the first table space would be the the first syscat table space so i did not do that I did not go inside so you can see the syscat table space so that's getting created the the, the the table spaces are getting created and the db2 create database test is going to take some time while that is that particular command is running what we will do is we will think we will think 
that our file system is now running out of the space. So let's do something. Let's actually verify our file system. So this is uh, may not be this because this is old document. So I may not have that value. So let's do one thing catch etc fs tab and this so let's see it was it was 11 gb so now let me run this and five figure out so it's still having that much space but the database is getting created while the database is getting created the space will go away so what what if what if this space is fully occupied what then what we are going to do so we have two options we can add another disk to the existing storage existing shared file system or we can create another shared file system and we are going to see both of it so right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create i'm going to add another file system of 20 gb to the to this not to this i'm going to create another shared file system so right now i got 15 gb disk so i'm going to create another shared file system of 20 gb disk so let's do that so this particular thing is already done so in cat etc fs tab you can see that i got only one disk the shared gpfs file system there is only one file system so i'm going to do one more thing so this is that particular file system the db2 fs1 which is of 15 gb uh, that's coming from dev sdg so you will be able to sorry dev stf 15 gb disk so free h10 gb so it's definitely great. okay that create database command is successful let's let's leave it over there and what we will do is we are going to add another disk another storage group to this particular database so let's do that so i'll run this particular command so this is dev sdf and okay so it has to be run as a root i should have known that sudo su minus root clear and that's done and you can see that this is the disk dev sdf which is 15 gb disk i'll add another 20 gb disk as a shared storage not to the existing file system i'm going to create another file system of 20 gb so that's what i'm going to do so let's do that so that name is sds so what i'm going to do is like i'm going to run this particular command so i'm going to run this particular command as db2 cluster minus cfs minus create file system db2 sd2 so the first one was uh, the db2 fs1 so now i'm adding another disk shared disk at db2 edge and i'm going to mount it at db2 sd so let's run this particular command and it's going to it's going to create another file system another file system and this particular command is also going to take some time so while that particular command is running i'll show you what I'll show you is I will show you the current storage group. So I need the so let's do that. Clear. So I the current is okay. Let's I thought okay. So we created the database, but we did not activate it. So let's do that. the reason why this is taking so much time is because as i mentioned my machines are not so powerful in your environment this will not take so much time and i'm not using the 10 gb network i'm using simple 1 gb network and my storage box my storage box my my data disks my first virtual machine my second virtual machine is all running on a very low and low powered laptop that's why it is taking this much time so give it a minute at the same time i have also created a file system so what i'll do is instead of talking i'll pause the video and come back when the database gets activated so it did not take time uh, so the database is activated and what we are going to do is we are going to run this particular command the storage groups and you can see that uh, the this is the storage group this is the default storage group and the this the situation that i'm going to explain so all of my table spaces will be on this particular storage group you can see everything is on that particular storage group so let me do one thing let me clear this so this is the one and if i run this and if i grab this then you can see all of my table spaces the syscat 
the temp and user table space is all on this particular shared path and i'm adding okay that's done okay that is good news so that's done so now what i will do is i will say db2 cluster minus cfs list file system so i'm going to do that so let's do that and you can see i got another disk and if i run df minus h to this it should be a 20 gb disk so we got a 20 gb disk and we got 15 gb disk the, the database is right now created on this particular disk there is no container or no table space neither the storage group on this particular disk so what i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to now create the uh let's do this and let's create the directory so that's done so this is where it's going to create the create the uh path so the the table spaces so i'm going to create so as i mentioned i got only one storage group you can see i got only one storage group now what i'm going to do i'm going to connect to the database and i'm going to initiate this particular command so i'm going to create a storage group the second the storage group is second on db2 sd this and then once that is done i'm going to create a table space called test one on that and i'm going to once that is done i will verify the storage groups and table spaces i'm going to do that so let's give it a minute the storage group is getting created on the newly added storage path so if i go to this particular location you can see there is nothing and this particular command is running so that's done now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a table space so ls minus l zero i'm going to create a table space on that particular storage group so now if i come here and run ls minus l i should have a table space directories created on this particular storage group so i'm waiting for that to happen so that's that command got completed i'll come here and i'll run the ls minus l and you can see node 00 and under this you can see test the database and under test you should be able to see a new table space t003 so now what i'll do is i will verify that yes now my database has got two storage now my database has got two storage groups ibm storage and second this is the first default storage default uh default share storage group which was created by the pure scale instance and this is what we manually added and if i run this particular command then we should be able to see that now we have got table spaces on the default as well as another table space on db2 sd so this is how you add the storage group so or uh, on another file system so what we are going to do the, we ran a simple command called db2 cfs create file system then we specify the logical name, which is the disk, what disk we use, the, the 20 GB disk, and when it is going to get mounted. Once that is done, we verified using the CFS list file system, and then we added the st new storage group using the create store group command, and we created a new table space using the create table space command, and then we verified. So it looks like everything is done. So we are good with additional. So the next thing that we are going to do is what we are going to do is I'm going to now think about this is for some reason the storage comes back uh let's let me do one thing let me run the cfs yeah so for some reason the storage comes back and says that we need to get rid of this particular disk for some reason there is a corruption on this particular disk can you remove that particular disk so something has happened so what we can do is what if if we don't want to remove it let's the capacity of this particular disk is currently 15 gb uh, I will show you this command should give us the capacity of this particular disk. This particular disk is 15 GB. What we I can I could have done is instead of creating another shared disk, I could have attached a disk to this to make it, you know. And you remember I had another a disk of 30 GB uh, that I initially mounted, which I have not used as of now. You can very well see that there is another disk of 30 GB here which I have mounted, but I have not used this disk, and I'm going to use that particular disk now. So let me show you that 30 GB disk, which is unused right now. What I'll also do show it to you that get etc fs tab. So you can see that 30 GB I have not used. And etc fs tab, if I do the grab for GPFS now, you should have two file systems. 
Uh, I think I made a, a DPFS, no, not G, DPFS. You can see that we got two DPFS file system, the default one and what we created just now. And you can, the, initially we had, we have, I have used this particular disk to create our, uh, to create our data disk. This one I have added just now. Okay, so if I run this particular command, okay, I'll show you everything. So if I run this particular command, so this, this one is this 15 GB disk, the dev SDF. This is dev SDH. So you can see dev SDF. And I'm going to, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this disk, which should be dev SDH, a 20 GB disk. Okay. So, and we do not, we have not used this 30 GB disk. So I'm going to use that 30 GB disk. To do that, what we need to do is I'm going to add, instead of creating a new disk, I'm going to add that disk to the existing cluster, uh, existing storage group. So I'll also show you. Okay, so that's, you can see that dev SDH, the 20 GB disk is this. And what I'll also show you the capacity of this, I, we have already seen it's a 15 GB, but I'll show you using the Linux command and you can see it's a 15 GB disk out of which 10 GB is available. I'm going to increase it 15 by plus 15 plus 30, which is 45. I'm going to increase it. So I'm, I'm going to extend this particular file system. So how do you do that? So again, we have to discover it and all of that, which I have already done. So now the command would be instead of create, instead of create, we are going to say db2 cluster add file system. So and the, the name of the disk is SDI. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to run this particular command. And once that command is done, you should be able to see that this particular disk, the dev SDF. Now, if I run this particular command, you should be able to see there are two disks under this, the dev SDF, which is 15 GB and another 30 GB, making the total capacity of this disk as uh, 45 GB. So let's wait for that particular command to complete and I'll come back when that is done. As you can see, that has added to the existing file system and we got some messages such as replication is needed. If there is a non-replicated data, and all of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this particular command. No, I'm not, I don't need to run that command. There is no point of running that command. So I'm going to run this particular command and you should be able to see, I got under this, I got two disks, the 15 GB disk and 30 GB disk. So you should be able to see that I got 10. It says 29.9, but it's actually a 30. Yeah, you can see here 30, 30 GB disk. And if I run this particular command, you should be able to see I have now capacity of 45 GB disk. So the initial requirement was not to extend, but we wanted to get rid of this disk. This disk, we wanted to get rid of it because the storage said that there is some corruption on this particular disk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this disk. So then again, the capacity will be from 45 GB. So we started with 15 GB. Now we are at 45 GB, but we are going to remove this 15 GB disk. So when I remove that particular 15 GB disk, the capacity is going to go back to 30 GB. So that's what we are going to do. So to do that, what we are going to do is we are going to use the command remove. So I'm going to remove the, the, uh, what is it? Uh, not, I'm going to remove the SDF. So I'm going to remove is it SDF? Yeah, I'm going to remove the SDF disk. So I'm going to remove the SDF disk. So that's what I'm going to do. Now this particular command should actually, let's see whether it works or whether it fails. I'm going to pause the video and come back when, if it fails. So you can see that cannot be removed because it is a tiebreaker disk. So this, this is not a cluster tiebreaker disk, but this is the cluster tiebreaker disk for the file system so that we cannot remove it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the tiebreaker. So I'll do one thing, I'll make it here. So you can see the that particular disk, the, the one which we attempted, the dev SDF, which I, I tried to remove the dev SDF disk and that is the tiebreaker disk. Uh, and how do you know that? You know, you can use the star mark. So currently the star mark shows 
I'll show it to you. The output of this command shows there is a star mark before the dev SDF, which indicates that it's a type. This you can see the star mark. So we cannot get rid of this disk because it's a tiebreaker disk. So that's why this particular command, when I try to remove that particular disk, that particular command fails. So I'm going to change the tiebreaker disk to the SDI disk. So I'm going to change the tiebreaker to SDI. So I'm going to make this this star will drip come from dev SDF to this. So I'm going to change the tiebreaker this to this and once that is done then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this particular command which actually failed to remove the dev SDF disk so I'm going to do that so that's done now if I run this particular command you should be able to see the star has moved from dev SDF to dev SDI so let's give it a minute so you can see the star has moved from SDF to SDI and now we should be able to successfully remove the dev SDF and when we remove the dev SDF then we should be able to see that we have we have the storage space for this particular file system has gone back from 45 GB so currently it is at 45 GB so when this particular command gets successful then we should be able to see that this 45 GB turns out to be so we started with 50 GB we added 30 GB to make it 45 GB now we are removing 15 GB days so to, it will make it back to it will make it to 30 GB so that's let's wait for it to finish so you can see that from 45 GB it has gone to 30 GB one of the disks is gone so let's wait for this particular command to complete and you should be able to see the dev SDF so we have successfully replaced one of the existing disks so what we could have what we have done is like we have added another disk and our database is still intact there is no nothing happened to our database because it will this all happen behind the scenes so if i do the db2pd minus db test minus table spaces then you should be able to see that all of my table spaces have normal state there is nothing wrong with my databases so you should be able to see that all of these table spaces are in normal state there is nothing wrong with our table spaces so this is completely online operation. So let's wait for that to finish. Now we have covered so many things in this. I will upload this particular document so that you can always refer this. And this is the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a third host or a new member to the cluster. And then, you know, so to do that, it's, it's going to take some time. So what we have to do is we have to repeat all of that thing that we have done till now such as we have to set install db2 create users set up networking set up passwordless ssh set up ntp set up site storage add a member using either db2 i setup or db2 i updt so i'm going to do that as a final thing so the you can see we got some warning but that's fine if i run the db2 cluster cfs list minus file system our database is intact so there is nothing there is nothing that is wrong with our database so we should be fine and you it's you can see that 30 gb disk so from 15 this particular disk is gone we have only 30 gb disk so that's done and all of our table spaces are normal as i can see the the last part of this particular tutorial is add third host or a new member to the cluster so i'm going to do that so to do that again it's it's a lot of story what we need to do is install db2 and all of it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect to the third node so let's do that so this is the third node so i'm connected to the third nodes it's in white so the first one is green the second one is sky blue and this is white this this is again the red hat 8.1 so exactly same the ssh between node one should work ssh between node 2 should work so ssh is already been set up the db2 is not at installed so we will repeat the steps that we have done if you want to watch it you can watch it you don't want to so db2 is not okay so this is okay this is i was i was into SSH. i got surprised how the db2 came because i know that i have not installed db2 so you can see the db2 is not installed so we are going to follow the same steps that we did before to install the db2 so what are the steps that i followed so we are going to first go to this location so i'm going to run this command together so i'm untarring the file then we are going to verify the prerequisites 
then we are going to install the same so let me copy those two commands together so right now it's doing the untar so that's done i'll go to that location it says our match so that is good we are going to install the tsa mp i'm going to press the space button and i'll hit the y so that tsa is getting installed once the tsa is installed i'm going to install the gpfs so i'm going to do that so let's give it a minute so i'm going to pause the video come back when the tsa is installed as you can see the tsa is successfully installed on node 3 the next thing that we are going to do is install the gpfs once the gpf is installed i'm going to create this particular directory i'll hit all of these commands together so you know saves my time so that's done the gpf is, is installed successfully and then i'm going to run this all this command say yes to the license the db2 is now getting installed so i'll pause the video come back when the db2 is installed as you can see the db2 is installed on node 3 successfully if i run the db2 ls command you should be able to see that 11.5.6 is installed exactly in the same location db i db2 v 11.5 so that's done so we the now comes the disks the shared disk they should not be available here so you can see we have got a to e i do not have the the pure scale disks so what we are going to do is we are going to log in and i'm going to run all of this together so you should be able to see all of these disks getting mounted here so you can see 15 gb disk 5 gb disk 20 gb disk 30 gb disk we no longer need this 15 gb disk because we have removed it from the cluster this was the initial data disk but we have removed it from the cluster so we no longer need it but there's no harm in actually getting access so now if i show you cat etc fs tab you should be able to see that i do not have the gpfs file system here at all on this particular node so that's done now every all the steps we have completed we i already have the user created you can see that i have got the user created called ibid dbp so that's done so to add a member i cannot run the add member from this particular node because this particular node is no it's not part of the cluster so you i have to run this from either node one or node two so this this particular command is what i'm going to add so now i'm saying add db3 okay so okay before running that command what i'll do is like i'll do i'll go here clear and i'll keep a note of this i'll run the date command so that you can see and gb2 instance minus list i'm going to run this particular command so i've got two members and two cfs two members and two cfs i'm going to do what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this particular command from root on node one so i'm going to hit this particular command so db3 the new host i'm adding the new member so i'm hitting the enter button and once this command is successful then we should be able to see that i've got three members so i just wanted to show you how if there is a requirement to add a third host or a new member how to do that and the steps would be install db2 create users set up networking set up passwordless SSL, set up ntp set up share storage add as a member using either db2 i setup you can use the db2 i setup or db2 i utility and i have used the db2 i utility and that particular command has initiated so let me pause the video and come back once that is done and you should be you keep an eye on this date so that you know that it is successful so let me pause the video so as you can see execution completed with warnings i'm going to ignore the warnings and i kept the screen for you so the time that it took to set up a new host 138 to 147 so close to 10 minutes uh, a little bit less than 10 minutes and now if i run the db2 instance minus list you should be able to see that i got three members now so I had two members, one DB1 and DB2, and you can see that now I got three members, one, two, and three. And if I do the, if I go to get home slash DBP slash SQL blip slash DB2 nodes dot config, I'll run this command from here. 
and you can see that we got three members one two and three and two cf in our cluster and the 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 third node now the third node that we just had that third node is now our is part of our cluster so we also learned how to add a new host or new member to the cluster and we followed these particular steps the last thing that i'm going to do and this will be the last thing and i'm going to stop the video after that is i'm going to delete the member from the pure scale cluster to do that we have to stop the the member from that particular stop the member on that particular instance uh, sorry stop the member on that particular host and then i'm going to drop that particular instance so let's do that so i'm going to clear okay let me clear my screen david okay i think this one okay yeah this is the reason why it did not work so i'm going to stop db to stop member or otherwise what i'll do i'll just do the db to stop i'll stop everything i'll stop the entire cluster and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this particular command so i'm going to i have to run it from node one so let's wait for that to stop let's everything stop once everything is stopped then i'm going to run this particular command so let me wait for the stop to happen so as you can see everything is stopped the initially the stop command failed because one of the database was that we activated the test database which i did not deactivate which i did and then i stopped ran the db2 stop command again and everything is stopped and you can see here when i ran the db2 instance minus list everything is in the stop state what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you ls the output of lsrp node and you can see that we got three nodes in the cluster db1 db2 and db3 all three nodes are online on db1 there is a cf and a member on db2 there is a cf and member and on db3 there is only the only the c uh, member so let's do that let me run that command so that you you understand what i'm saying is like uh instead of just talking about the nodes you can see that on db1 we have member and a cf on db2 we have member and cf and on db3 we have only member and the the all the nodes are up and running that's why it is showing that everything is online what i'm going to do now is i'm going to run this particular command db2 iupdt minus drop so i'm going to drop the third member from the cluster and once that is done that we should if i run the lsrp node command you should be able to see that we have only db1 and db2 in the pure scale cluster and here if i run the db2 instance minus list this member the db3 the, this member should be not there as part of the db2 instance minus list i have initiated that particular command uh, let's let me show you the current time uh, date what i'll do is like i'll put a date here and then i will run i'll come back once this particular instance is dropped i'll come back and show it to you what is the current time how much time it will take and what is our cluster status this is the last part of this particular video i have already initiated the command this is if this works fine then we should be able to see two members and two cfs and the third member that we added or the third host should not be part of our cluster i'll pause the video and come back once this is done so that's done the some warnings and now let me run the ls rp command and you can see that we had three db1 db2 db3 and now we have only two in the cluster and as i mentioned i'll run the date command once again and 202 so it took six minutes approximately six minutes or so and now if i run the db2 instance minus list then you will be able to see that now we have got two members and two cf so we whatever third member that we added whatever third member that we added we have got rid of it I, this was very lengthy we learned a lot of things this particular tutorial was done was for step by step setup of ibm db2 pure scale and this particular setup was done on db2 11.5.6 linux 8.1 rail version virtual box 6.1.30 if you like my video if you like my 
channel if you like my content do subscribe to my channel and hit the like button thank you for watching and if you have any comments do pass in the comment section thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial bye bye